Oh, well, can you believe it? N.A. is 4-0 this week. It feels like it's a pretty good time to be alive. We're back, baby. Hello and welcome to VCT Americas. Coming to you live from the Riot Games Arena in Los Angeles, California. Of course, I'm Golden Boy, and I'm here joined by two awesome people. We have Sideshow and Benita once again. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what a day yesterday was, huh, Josh? Yeah, we had some great games. Oof. We had some exciting stuff. And we still don't know who's going to playoffs. That's right. That's <laughs> How right. How crazy is that? Amazing. Of course, let's talk about what happened and what we saw yesterday because we kicked the day off with Sentinels and crew both bringing out reworked rosters. Benita, we were a little worried about how this reworked Sentinels roster would work, but it seems it was just all guns blazing top to bottom. Yeah, it worked out for them. Uh, we saw Tens had a little bit of a slow start, but honestly, he had some, he finished off really, really strong. So yeah. they looked great at the end. And they also got away with it a little bit. This is the winless team that they were playing against. That's true. And they were fairly close games, actually. First one into OT, and then second one was, what, 13-10, I think, the final scoreline being? So, yeah. Yeah, it's still some things to work on, but maybe starting to find their footing and a vision yeah. for the future. Well, listen, man, if you're a Sentinels fan, this was the world championship, and they won <laughs> it, okay? So, but all that being said, though, we're very much looking forward to seeing what happens with Sentinels moving forward. And then we have the next chapter in the ongoing saga of last and NRG. Sideshow, this matchup certainly did not disappoint. I think if you're a loud fan, obviously you're a little frustrated with how things went out. But I, for NRG, what a season they've had. What a come up. Yeah, they, they've looked fantastic ever since going back to those original roles, the ones that they've been on for such a long time. They look fluid. They look dynamic. They have so many different ideas and strategies. They're always on the same page. And they had something to prove today. They had something to do, and that was to clinch playoffs. And they did it by taking down the undefeated team. They just seemed super prepared for this match. Like, we knew that Loud didn't have to, like, try anything new or cheeky, but NRG was just ready for the W. Yeah, they were ready. They, it, it felt like they were poised to take that win, and, and they were so confident in it. The game plans, I mean, that first map was just a masterclass in calling from Finesse. Definitely one to go back and check out for sure. But, of course, that saga is certainly going to continue post-Americas. Now, as we head to the end of Week 7, we have three playoff spots that are still up for grabs. Three, tres, they're still available to you. All right? And right now, as it stands, Leviathan, 100 Thieves, and Furia, they're the ones that are sitting in the 4th, 5th, and 6th position. So, I think if you are a fan of either of those teams, you want the, the season to end right now, Josh, wouldn't you? <laughs> Yeah, stop the count. Just end it here. Let's let's put these teams through. But also, look at that. If Leviathan end up losing today and they go four and four, you've got a crazy four-way tie in yeah. the middle, which has got to get broken down. Obviously, there's still more matches to be played, but there, there's a lot of parity in this league. Yeah, there, there really is. Uh, you couldn't have asked for a, a better way for this all to play out. But let's actually talk about how the tiebreaker works, okay? So we're just going to keep... I want to say we're going to keep it simple, but there's a lot of words here, okay? <laughs> so this is for you, your, your Reddit and VLR kids out there. Go ahead and screenshot it, put it on the internet, and then y'all can go ahead and figure it out to <laughs> damn self. That being said, this is the rules for the three-way tie side show. It's the head-to-head -head tie for three teams, as we can see. And on top of which, it, it's really just about figuring out how do we break that with how, as you had mentioned, the parity between these teams. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, if there's a three-way tie and one of the teams has beaten the other two, then they go through. Otherwise, you move on to the next stuff, and it mostly comes down to map differential, right? Have you been winning more throughout the season? If so, bada-bing, bada-boom, you're Boom. through. That's so, the, obviously, there's a lot more that goes into this if the teams are tied on maps and rounds and et cetera, et cetera. But there, there's the rules for you to take a look at. Now, the four-way ties, though, that's yeah. where... Yeah. Your head-to-head -head stuff kind of flies out the window. This is the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. but if there is a serious chance that we have a multiple team tie. That's like true. I said, you look at the standings, there's so many teams that might end up being four and five, possibly even five and four by the end of this. And a lot of that is going to come down to map differential. So basically, you don't have to think about this too complicated. You just have to think the teams yeah. not only need to win in order to put themselves in those ties, but they need to win as cleanly as possible so that they have the most maps for versus against. Of course, of course. And if you didn't catch any of that, just don't worry. I'm sure Sideshow would do like a co-stream or something like that. He'll answer it again, okay? Because I know everyone's going to be confused about it again. But don't worry. We got you covered. Now, everyone here on the staff, as always, we all know this, they consume a ridiculous amount of Valorant content. And, and, and it's made all of us better players. I mean, surely it's made us all better players. Surely. Right? Right? Well, here's the thing. Josh, Sideshow, this young man right here, 
I guess, uh, came to us and he had an idea. He wanted to study pro plays and strats, and then they wanted to go and replicate them in Premiere. Why? <laughs> He's standing like that. <laughs> because I know what's coming up, and I don't know whether it's good or whether it's bad. But here's the thing. We have a five stack of the VCT's finest talent, and we wanted to recreate some plays like a classic Leviathan B retake on Lotus. Check it out. See, this is the play. All right, we're going to see how this plays out, right, yeah. Josh? And you guys studied this. Oh, we studied it religiously. Look at this. Dash updraft, tackle with the shorty. Shy right behind him, a pop flash through the smoke. It looks clinical. It looks precise. These are the things that teams love to see from Leviathan. The precision in terms of the protocols, Benita, mm, immaculate. Yeah, 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Now I'm Benita's sure. Benita's just like, what is blood waffling about? It's close to a 10. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and see what happened when our team tried to pull it off. Let's see. We retake through here. We did yeah, a lever taking, retake. Taking B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's go through. Let's go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Leviathan retake. Yeah. You need to you need to be updrafting and shorty in and all sorts. They're out. They're out. They're out. Hundred thirty-seven. Hundred thirty-seven on the chat. Kill the jet first. No, we can't. We don't have time. I'm trading Bala. Bala doesn't need trading. Holy sh**! Is it one man oh, army? Sticking! Oh. They can't tackle me up! Yo, good nice. sh**, Marla. Mid, 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 mid. This is our retake. Somebody watch the flank. I'm about to break door. They just dog door. Let me, yep. let me flash you in. You made a power not. Oh, no. Okay, are you flashing? Go on, trade that. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. And again. And again. And again. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, no, no, no. Huh? We're, We're pushing that. We're pushing that. We're pushing that. I nano. I nano deep. I nano deep. I nano deep. Nobody get on the spike. Oh, you Collins. <laughs> well, I got it anyway. I got it anyway. That was a great Leviathan retake. <laughs> I love the comms. <laughs> Doug, Doug should have left you hanging. <laughs> Doug should have left you hanging. We won both of those retakes. and It's not a bad strat. I think our coordination might have been a little off, though. Benita. Yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, but <laughs> it was good. It was good. Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not here for this narrative that Sideshow is apparently good at Valorant. And thankfully, my good friend, my colleague, my, my partner in crime, Mimi, oh. she posted a video on Twitter that shows really what his game oh. looks like. Let's take a look. No. <laughs> I'm gonna help you by a look. Amen in default. Last player default. standing. Amen. Where is my harbor? <laughs> what are you doing? You are flanking here with <laughs> a jug. Everybody <laughs> type GG. Everybody type GG. <laughs> <laughs> Attackers win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just to die to the turret? Right? <laughs> okay, that we were we were 12-2 down. We'd lost like eight games in a row of rank that night after going 0-2 in Premier. I don't think actually that it's reasonable that production has shown that of me in my darkest moment. <laughs> but that is that is disgusting, actually. <laughs> That's not okay. You know what though? This gives me a great idea, Josh. Uh, we want to see clips from you guys at home, but but not the good ones. No, the sideshow type clips, right? We want the whiffs. We want the bad plays. We want the sag plays. Make us laugh, just like the way sideshow makes us laugh each and every week. Yeah, people <laughs> laughing at me, though, not with me. Use the hashtag VC America's NVCT, and maybe, of course, we'll feature your stuff here on the broadcast, but only if it's really bad. So get to it, people. But we are going to take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back, we're going to be diving into the final match of the week, another NASA showdown. It's going to be Cloud9 facing on Leviathan. We'll see you guys on the other side. Verán igualmente la eliminación a Josh que va a recibir, se lleva uno, consigue el segundo, es el tercero, y con Chino, King consigue el cuarto. You just have to be expecting that, knowing what's on the other side, but they're, they're, so, they're having such a hard time dealing with what's in front of them.
Welcome back, everyone, to VCT Americas. It's time to break down our final matchup of the week. It's Cloud9 versus Leviathan. Now, the stakes are different for both of these teams, right? Because Cloud9, they've already clinched themselves a playoff spot. They're good to go. For them, really, it's just being able to maintain this second-place position side show so that this way their path is, you know, not going to be as challenging for the playoffs. Yeah. Whereas on the other side, Leviathan, this is a squad that is trying to cling to life, and this is the game that they need to do it. Leviathan actually embody everything that's so crazy about Americas. They can finish in second seed, yeah. overtaking Cloud9 if everything worked perfectly. Or they might not make playoffs. It's and that, that is bonkers. So if the standings ended right now, this is what playoffs would look like. So this is not how it's going to be. This is it simulated if we just stopped everything right now and you would see that Leviathan would be in you know 100 Thieves playing on the other side Loud and Cloud9 and what's important here is the top two seeds yep. Loud Cloud9 in their current positions would only need to win one match to make it to Tokyo because if you get to match eight you're already top three that's that qualifies it. you that's it so you literally just need to beat the the teams coming out of that quarterfinal get to that point and then you are on the path to Tokyo wild to think about and if anything it just you know puts uh, the pressure a little bit more I think, Benita, on this Leviathan team or not. I think we know because, it, it, as Josh said, there's really the, the range is out of this world. Second to not making playoffs? Yeah, the range is really, really big. But we know that Lev, they love their strats. They're really tactical heavy. And um, we know that they're going to be super prepared for this. Yeah, they will be. They have to be. They have no other choice, especially when you have coach owner, you know, calling the shots in the background there. We'll see, of course, what Leviathan can do when they take the stage. But I think we also have to ask ourselves the question of what version of Leviathan are we going to see today? Are we going to see the team that, that stomps their opponent, that look good and stunts on everyone out there? Or are we going to see the team, Josh, that at times struggles with identifying, like, how do we be flexible? How do we try and create some uniqueness in the mid rounds? Yeah, I think actually Leviathan have struggled a lot with that. I love the way that they play. I think their protocols, Same. their game plans are They're good. They are a really good team. But there is so much hard anti striking that happens in America. Yeah, especially we're, we're in week seven. So you have to be ready to understand how to like mid round call and make the like audibles to adjust your strats. You cannot just go textbook strat like round by round. Well, and let's talk about that, Benita, because you've obviously been through the ringer as well, right, as a competitor. And, and I guess what I'm wondering is, each week, right, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to do something a little bit differently so that this way you could throw off your opponent for the next week? Like, how does that work when you're prepping for these games? Yeah, I think you have to add a little spice every time because you know that your opponent is watching you and, you know, all these teams nowadays have, like, two analysts, a head coach. They have, there's yeah. so many, there's so many staff um, that it's easy to do the homework and prepare your players for these matches. Yeah, I, it, it's it, there's so much film that's out there, and I think it goes without saying that you know you're going to need to really look at the star players to have to make a huge waves here for these teams. One player in particular, Takaleo's performance is split. At times, seems like you know he is a, an animal in, on land, and then quiet and then an animal it's again yeah. it's the same thing he follows the same flow as leviathan as a team yeah i think that's a, a, an interesting point i think overall what we've seen from taco this year has been really subpar compared to what we we're expecting he he did have a resurgence against crew but that's also crew playing you know they're, they're the bottom team at the moment in terms of their win rates uh, top five jet players in america's right now you see leaf in there too you don't see taco no there's you no don't. taco up there, whereas he's got the quality and demonstrated the quality in the past, especially when he was playing Chamber, actually, to, to be on a list like this. But he hasn't shown it. Yeah, when I think of, like, a great jet, taco is definitely up there for me. But I think on land, like, under these lights and the pressure, um, maybe he hasn't just... He hasn't his found way. himself. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't acclimated to the uh, to the atmosphere yet. And this yeah. is, of course, a tweet from Takalia saying, you know, uh, one to two uh, at Hundred Thieves. I cannot perform on stage. There is no excuse. Oof. That's rough. That is rough, man. Like, I Happens. cannot perform on stage. Yeah. Because You're... not only does that tell you he's aware of his own issues, For sure. but it tells you he's getting in his own head about them, too. Yeah. And that is a struggle. I know that this team, before Ona joined, were having a lot of, like, that mental barrier problem. And Ona helped them a ton. Yeah. But it feels like this last 
piece, I mean, one of the last pieces to really push Leviathan into being an extremely dangerous team is Taco and getting him online. For sure. And, and you said one of the pieces, but the other piece as well is King, right? Because King is one of those high impact players, but he's also calling. He's also, he, you really want him to step up, uh, Benita, I guess yeah. in that instance, would be great for you here to step up and be the person that says like, hey, Taco, you're having a rough day. Lean on me. Like, yeah. what are you hoping to see from King here? You know, playing on LAN is like a skill on its own, but IGLing is like a different, like just a whole different world. And I think it's really important for him to try to activate his players like Taco and get him in there and build that like yeah. trust that they have in the scrims because we know that their protocols are very, very scripted and very um, prepared. So yeah. they need to get activated within the rounds. Yeah, and a King is such a fantastic player. No one is disputing that. He's one of the best. But I, I got a telestrator where I really oh, okay. want to break yeah. down what I think some of the problems with his calling style have been recently. And I'm going to start with these two issues. Beautiful handwriting. Right? Yeah, thank you. It, the two big Leviathan issues I want to break down are they've got predictable timings and they're doing the same things with their ults every time. So let's focus on the first thing first, the predictable timing. So let's take a look at this round overall. They are playing a 1-1 one, one three kind of setup. So they have one player there, one player there, three players there looking to take some short control and they're gonna end A here. Now what's important to notice is these timings on the regenerating utility. Fault line and arrow were both used at 140 in the round. And what that means is as you get back to the minute mark, they're going to start coming online. And if you take a look at the mini map here, they are waiting and waiting and they don't want to commit even after they've got all of these picks and cryo slips down as they're waiting for that stun and for that recon dart to come back online. Leviathan weren't holding any of this yeah. space. This has allowed these players to slip in, or just this one player actually of Cryo, to slip in down short, and he finds a timing not only to fight Shy, but again, finds Shy using utility. It's like they're trying to be too perfect. Yeah. On an eco to, too. Yeah, on an, on an anti-eco. And Cryo just ruins this round by doing something puggy. Uh, here it is again, okay? So we're gonna take a look at the fault line and the Econ dart. These are used at about 130 in the round, and that is used to take garage control. That means that when they come back to this point in the round, if I just pause the timer here, at the 50 second mark, oopsie daisy, at the 50 second mark, that means that they have got the uh, fault line and the recon dart back online again. They go for this C hit and the whole of 100 Thieves start rotating because they just know that this is going to be an exec. And that like, using early utility, waiting for them to come back online, and then executing. That's what they do on Haven. They've been doing it on Ascent for a long time too. They are calling strats out of a playbook. Stella reads it completely. So let's move on to point two, yeah. right? Which is their ultimate usage. So in this round, they have Mazzino's ult, and they have Shy's ult. And what they do is exactly the same with these ults. It doesn't even really matter what the map is. So we're gonna have a look at the mini map here. In all of their VODs, they use the lockdown in this spot right here. Mazzino is going to ult into this spot if they go for a C hit, or sometimes he ults into heaven if they go for an A hit. And they are so ready for it. I'm going to play this one through, and you'll see that what happens is Mazzino is ulting into the back. They go for the garage play. This player in garage gets killed by a player hiding behind the box, and they actually go for a thrash. They are taking mid control, thrashing behind them as bang Jeez. holes for Mazzino. This is the hardest read of hard reads as to what is happening with the ults in this round. Mazzino dies, he does the same play when it comes to, you know, Lotus as well. Here's another example just to show you the final example. Let's take a look at the full screen. Mazzino has his ultimate, Asuna's holding for it in heaven. Asuna Waiting. is starting the round in heaven to stop Mazzino's ult from coming through. And they also have, they know that this kind of area is also common for the ult. And you'll see that Derek backs up towards this position. Asuna moves away as he realizes it's not at the start. And there it is, up at the top, Mazzino's ult. It ends up getting canceled, and Derek's in a perfect position to completely stop the B hit. This game was close. This game was really winnable for Leviathan. Yeah. And they didn't close it out, and they're running the same strats. And this is not just on Haven. This is on Ascent as well. This is on Lotus too. There's got to be some more variety than this, Benita. Yeah, watching some of these rounds, it looks like they are, you know, baking a cupcake. They're following a recipe, like, one by one by one, and it's very, um, you know, telling. Yeah, because you have to freestyle yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it, it's one approach to, like, approach Valorant and, like, 
okay, we're doing this strat and then we're gonna do this protocol. If this happens, this happens. But especially on land, I think it's really, really gonna benefit you if you you need to spice it up. There's no yeah. other option, especially coming this deep like into week seven. I, I could not agree more. That, of course, moves us on to their opponents, Cloud9. Now, Josh, I got to ask you, though, buddy, how are you feeling about this team going into the home stretch here? Because what a journey they have had from where they started to where they ended up. Yeah, I think we just talked about Leviathan and having all of those set plays. Yeah. Cloud9 have a bunch of set plays too, and they look gorgeous with them. The, the preparation is really good, but they're also doing different stuff all the time. They have varied compositions that they bring out on maps like Ascend. The players are popping off. Leaf is out here with his haircut looking fantastic on stage. You know, Zelsus' biceps are ripped. Okay. His team is out all here right. going crazy. Why don't you just marry them? You're, you're, you're not even talking about the game. You're just talking about about them yeah, as such, people. You are such a child. <laughs> Did you, you such, make this? Yeah, I made this. I drew this, right? Because I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Cloud9. And I think it's so childish that you would say, marry this team if you like them. Well, I haven't heard that since middle school. Yeah, I made you a cake. You see? You know, if I was such a child, would I have been able to make a cake? I think children can bake, yeah. I, yeah, they probably can, but could they bake as good as this? And, and look, I even make cookies también, you see? <laughs> look, 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 mira, Cloud9. Thank see? you. Uh, I, you know, I, I do For, feel so strongly you about this. So you can marry team. them. I think they're playing the best Valorant right now. I, I will marry them. Why not? So you're gonna marry you're gonna marry Cloud9 right now if I dare you. Yeah, Five hundred dollars. Why not? <laughs> Benito, bring us back to society. I mean, great team. I agree with all your points, but I really do think that this might be a honeymoon phase for them. Ooh. Um, and the music's yeah, wrapping up, they, too. <laughs> this is definitely a honeymoon phase in my perspective. They've only experienced hardship two times, two L's, and I don't think that's enough to, um, you know, learn from their mistakes, yeah, challenge yeah. them, and see how, like, the five of them together interact with each other like within a loss. And I would be concerned about that a little bit <laughs> if they didn't just have to win one game to get it to Tokyo. So true. I, I, because they've still got chances of being able to go, this, this, this is it's not going good. to happen. They're not going to be stuck in the basement regretting this marriage. I, okay? I, you know, you know, They're going to no, be no. happy forever, Golden just, Boys. Just, just because you sign on the dotted line doesn't mean happiness is guaranteed, Josh. Is that coming well, that's from not a dark coming from my experience. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, though, guys, look, I, I think everyone on Cloud9, though, has been feeling great this year, especially that guy, Leaf. He has been on fire. I, 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 I haven't had a chance to look at the numbers, but I'm fairly certain uh, top, at the very least, top two across the board in the Americas he, region. He's number one in Americas for ACS. He just overtook Aspas yesterday when Aspas had a rough game. Jeez, and, and it's just been all consistency from Benita. I know you have experience with Leaf. You actually yeah, played with him. That's unbelievable. He's such a great player. Um, I met Leaf maybe when he was like 15. I have known him from CS. And even back then, he was so good at the game. You could just tell by doing an eye test. Like, if you watch him, he is mechanically just there. He doesn't make many fundamental errors. And you could see that when you're watching him. I just um, want to, sorry, I just want to point okay. out, these are his global ranks. This yeah. is yeah. compared to everybody else in all of the other leagues. You know, that's up against Durka and Safe and all the other people, Marco and yeah. you know, all of the other people around the world that are popping off. Leaf is at number four. Uh, that's crazy good. Yeah, he just like never really got his moments, yes. And now to see him here, like I'm so happy for him. I think he deserves it so much. He's a student of the game and it just really shows. Yeah, it, it, every time we see Leaf play, it is truly spectacular. He's a, such a talented player. And of course, you know, you have players like Leaf and King that have really been the center of the year's most memorable moments. And we also got their perspective in this installment of Retakes. Check it out. Look at them pushing all the way through Paranoia. No, they're pushed back and right into them. Could be a bit of a trap play because they're not expecting it. The knives in his hands and four kills. Ripped away. Ooh, baby. <laughs> I forgot about this round. We got very fortunate. Uh, the Killjoy turret went down at B. We were gonna gamble uh, and just three push B main anyway. Um, but I mean, I just, I felt like, uh, I didn't expect that many people catwalk, to be honest. I expected like three, not four. I mean, it's only one more, but still I expected three. And then, um, I don't know, the util was just perfect from the people on A, uh, the, the mollies and the alarm bots to delay and then the paranoia to push them back. And then obviously I just hit my shots, but it was very nice. Chat does. Nice. One more two, one more two, one more two. Oh! Maybe a man, maybe a man. I'm flanking him, 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 mayb
I would have whiffed all my knives on the first guy, probably, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's the reason why I don't play Jet. I feel like I perfectly kind of dodged, like, the bullets. Like, I literally dodged the op shot with my Jet Dash and stuff like that. So it's like, I feel like uh, it was just kind of in the moment, like, kind of perfect. Casino's got behind enemy lines! Kingston has to hold it on his own! He's got one! The time is short, he's got to hold it! He's got to hold it! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! The Red Bull Clutch and we're going to overtime! Digo, siento que la jugué bien porque estaba en una situación 3 vs 1 y sabía que no la podía defusar nadie porque estaba con veneno y humo, si no me equivoco. Entonces sabía que los otros dos jugadores se iban a desesperar y me iban a querer buscar los choques porque la única manera en que ellos podían ganar la ronda era eh, holdear el defuse y, y no poder soltarlo porque si lo soltaban un segundo perdían. Yeah, I have a shorty. Couldn't kill him. I want to say we didn't have time. I, I'm pretty sure the, the spike, I'm very certain the spike would have went off before we even could have defused, so. He played it well. His teammates before that, whoever the harbor was, it was uh, Mazzino. He played this, uh, he snuck in and, and got a, like a, the super important kill. Which delayed us like big time. Arriba, can I hit the next King tiene una eh, una especialidad que es su mov movimentación eh, cuando juega, cuando dispara. Como que dispara hacia el lado, dispara hacia el lado y se mueve mucho. Y eso le ayuda mucho a conseguir multifrac. Y eso fue lo que pasó acá. Estaban los tres en, en la spike tratando de defenderla y su movimentación hizo que ganaran la con. You just can't hit him, he just keeps moving. He's like sliding. He's like Michael Jackson, like thriller moonwalking all over the place while he's shooting you. That's it. Nothing so far that Cells could do, at least a kill, a second one from Venkata! It's a spike though, not yet a halfway, Venkata gets the third kill, a two versus two! Can he actually get it done? A fourth headshot on the target mode, a one versus one, he gets the ace! Cara, I didn't know what to expect, because normally I don't buy the Sheriff in this pistol. I just saw in my mind, it was 10 to 2, I said, let's buy a Sheriff here. A gente costuma brincar no, nos freeze times de que se alguém matar cinco no pistol, alguém, o coach vai raspar a cabeça. E na hora que eu ganhei, eu já falei agora, na hora, você vai raspar a cabeça, você vai raspar a cabeça, porque eu matei o cinco. Foi, foi só isso que passou na minha mente na hora, que você vai raspar a cabeça. Godlike. Depois que isso daí aconteceu, os dois caiu, era guerra, não tinha muito o que fazer, eu tinha que buscar os kills, eu consegui, e não tem muito mistério, só fui buscando os frags. If there's one thing that we know about VCT Americas is that each and every week we are treated to banger after banger after banger. And let's go ahead and close out week seven just like that. You couldn't have asked for a better way to wrap up the week than these two teams. Let's welcome to the stage Cloud9 and Leviathan. This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised.
coming into the season, we're the underdogs, and because we had two new players, we put more time in. Every game, we trade a playoff match, and because we want to win. There's no losing. Huge, huge out from Jake. Huge out from Rooney. FRC and RGL are both weak. Oh. And FRC dead. Oh. Buys time for Zeppa to get the third. Motivado para enfrentarlo. Le tengo mucho respeto a todo a todos los players. Ah, this feels like Taco's gonna have him one of those games. Yeah. The defensive walls up at the same time. You got a judge on the other side. A nade coming in here too. Oh no. Que lo he visto jugar y y siempre están un paso adelante de de lo que quiere hacer el. People believe we like hard anti-strat teams, but like I think it's us adapting on the fly. And, and they're only two playing back, and they're going to get run over. Y eso que vamos a darlo todo, que sea un buen partido y nada necesitamos esa victoria, así que vamos con todo. King got in sight with him on elbow, and he got the kill on it too. Okay. He gets the second. Six bullets left as he looks for the third, and it delivers. All right, everyone, welcome back. I know I said that we were going to welcome the teams to the stage. Slight delay. Don't worry, though. We will be on our way in no time. Uh, for the time being, though, I think it does raise the question. We were seeing what King was saying there. What are going to be some of the things that Leviathan need to do here? I know we talked about the way that they, uh, you know, call their plays, the way that they do their ults. How, what, what are the keys to victory here, Josh? Well, to me, it comes down to three things. One is getting Taco online, right? We talked about that. Two is refreshing their playbook a little bit. And three is making sure that they are able to navigate the challenges that Cloud9 have. You heard Leaf talk about how good they are at cooking up set plays. If they can't get around that, they're not going to get the win. Yeah, it, most definitely. And I think that it goes without saying that this matchup is going to be exciting for multiple reasons. You know, for Leviathan, it's about being able to stay in control of your own destiny, make the playoffs for Cloud9. It's about being one step closer to Tokyo. So let's go ahead and welcome to the stage C9 and Leviathan. It's about getting that win and getting one step closer to Tokyo. And for Leviathan, well, it's just about securing the dub here today and hoping that the shenanigans doesn't happen in the rest of the league. You really, Sideshow, are banking on the fact that for Leviathan, they absolutely cannot allow Cloud9 to control their own destiny. They, they have to be the ones to pick up this win here today. They have no choice, in my opinion. Yeah, think about what Leviathan are going up against here. They're going up against Cloud9, and then they're going up against Loud. That's, yeah. That is two out of three of the best teams, and I, I'm, only, I'm not even saying top two because NLG did so well yesterday. But yeah. really, that is as difficult as a schedule gets. And, and you're in a range Ooh, no, where you can yeah, either yeah, get yeah. second or end up in seventh or yeah. eighth or something like that. Yeah. It's just it, absurd. It's truly ridiculous. But I think Leviathan have all the pieces to be able to win. I, I really, really believe that. They are a top-level team. They have just done too much of the same stuff for the last few weeks. Yeah. I, I think as long as they've been in the lab, and frankly, it's almost like a bye week they had against Crew. I know that sounds really harsh, but they've had like an extra week where they're playing against an opponent they know super well from Latam that they are heavily expected to destroy. They, they can use that week to prep for, not just prep for Cloud9, but just update things a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Experiment with letting Mazzino and Shy off the leash, lurking just a slight amount. You know, don't do everything just by the script. Yeah. Yeah, I think Lev, um, if they keep it a little, just more on the simple side of things, they're gonna rack up some round wins here. 
Yeah, and, and, and I want them to kind of play to their strengths here, right, yeah. Benita? But you also do want to see at least some kind of flexibility on their side, right? Do you feel like that's going to be necessary against C9? Yeah, of course. I think they need to, like I said earlier, just spice it up. Put spice. Some put some sprinkles on top of their cake. Or, yeah. You know. Keep it simple. Don't overcook it. Yeah. But add a little spice where you can. You know, it's uh, it's a lot like my chicken dish that I made that made last night. Yeah. I mean, you saw the cloud nine cake. It was, you know, it was refined, elegant, excellent. What we want is like a ginger spice cake from Maria. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. Something. something give something me a real kick. Give give me a give me a nice sloppy tres leches. You know. That's what I want. Uh, in any case, I just want cake now. Let's go into these map vetoes and figure out where we're going to be playing. First and foremost, we saw that first band go through, I believe, Fractures number two, but first, I think, was Ascent. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. No, it was oh, uh, Pearl. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Cloud9 have been getting rid of Pearl most of the time. It's also at the top of Leviathan's map pool, which makes this a really difficult match uh, to win overall. And Cloud9 go for Lotus. Uh, Leviathan did look really good on Lotus. I love the I like Cloud9 more on Lotus, though. Cloud9, Leaf, it just controls the game on that map. Can't j Leaf on uh, Neon is just unstoppable sometimes. W what can you do at that moment? I know. They're going into Haven and all of those things I was talking about with the protocols and the way they play. That's the where we're going to have to see some uniqueness from Leviathan. Yeah, yeah. But honestly, I just used Haven as an example. They do similar things all the time on Lotus, on Ascent, on Pearl, on the other maps that they play too. And they actually are going to remove Ascent. This used to be the best map for Leviathan. And they've been beaten on it so many times that they're deciding to get rid of it and end instead on Bind, a map where we just Ooh. don't know what is going to be we happening. We haven't seen C9 on Bind, so this will be a really interesting one. How do we feel this plays out? We didn't get predictions. Benita, who do you think is going to win? Oh, I'll give it to C9. 2-0. 2-0, so, so yeah. C9. So you, <laughs> Lotus and Haven will be 2-0. What about you, Josh? Uh, I think the I think Cloud9 can win this. And even if they don't win 2-0, they're actually favored in the final map of Bind 2. I just think Leaf and Zeppa are going to go crazy on that map. Yeah, it's hard It's hard to say 2-0 for me. I do, I do like the ambition there. I think 2-1, but hey. Stranger things have definitely happened in the America's League. But now we wait for the uh, agent select to come through, and it's Lotus. So really what I, our eyes are going to be on is whether or not Leaf is going to run that Neon or not. Which has looked amazing. Uh, every team that's been playing Neon has been getting success out of it. Oh, and there is a huge difference. That's big. Taco goes back to Rays. He only played a little bit of Rays at the beginning of the year. It didn't look good, and since then he's been permajet, basically. Yeah, but there's an opportunity here. Taco Lea, if maybe he just needed a change of pace in order to win wake up, Anita. That could have been the, the recipe for them. Yeah, I think they're going to really hold the raise util for the aggression. So that's why they need. All right. Well, we're going to be swapped. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to be keeping our eyes on that one there and send it over to your casters. Now, I know I'm still in my honeymoon period with Doug and Bala. <laughs> Thank you so much, Golden Boy Bala. An opportunity in the hands of Cloud9 to sweep the NA versus South American weekend that we've had so far. Yeah, it has been a big one coming into this. There was five matches. This is the final one out of five, and it has probably the highest stakes out of everything, especially for Livia Dunn over here. For Cloud9, like the Dust said, this is a chance to lock in that top two space. So essentially for them, it must feel kind of like a step in that playoff direction. Yeah. Yeah, certainly some heavy stakes really for both squads here. And again, to, to think that this is a position we find ourselves in so late into the season, such low expectations for Cloud9. They've subverted all of them. And they now find themselves just a little bit away. Fast from push here from at least number two, potentially number one. Can't that early hit. aggression from the then instantly dissuaded. And Cloud9 instantly reacting off of that breaking of the turret to take so much A space. Now they have all the room to go for a fast hit with the Trailblazer. But the turret was left here for Mazzino to play with. Handle gets broken through. You've got Zelsus playing on the other side of this alarm bike. He gets pushed off, clears it out. Now they funnel in towards B, making Leviathan resources scatter. No damage exchanged except on Nosworth. Pushing the waterfall though, and King avoids the flash. He gives up the space, which is a dangerous game to play when the spike is planted. He ran all the way back on the C site. Right, he got bullied. He got bullied away. Sorry. And Paranoia is going to help things a little bit. Mazino is able to get the first. Traded back, though. Cloud9 still with control of the site. You've got Zeppo, who's gone exploring. He may hit an incredible timing here while you still have the other three members of Cloud9 playing from main. And you've got another Molly on that, too. 
Really good opportunity for delay here. Because they aren't, I mean, they're not even on it. They just now got on it. That first flank now dealt with. It's all going to be the fight up front. And it's all going to go in favor of Cloud9. What a scattering from the Leviathan players. Just immediately, I mean, seeding the site and falling so far away. Just in the sense of time there, you're losing so much of it and allowing that flank coming in from heaven and not denying any of the utility from going down on the Cloud9 side. That is an uh, interesting decision, but one that Leviathan, I mean, I, I kind of expect from them. So often you're seeing the discipline on the players to fall back and go in for full retakes, but here's non-discipline. They're going to go all straight up in the A main and try to duel against players of Cloud9. It's quiet though, I like this. Element of surprise still in hand and, and it's just dismissed. Cool idea. Going really, the only thing you can do in, in a situation like down. that after you lose a pistol, you're down on guns, you're not really forcing anything, you just try to catch them slipping, so to speak. Yeah. I, I, I like this part. approach from the Viet Thanh, though, because it's, it is out of their element. Like, normally sure, their sure. eco strats, they go for some gimmicks, like what we just saw, but it's more to do with, like, a util trap or mm -hmm. something like that. Other I than planted. that, they go for widespread normal play. So see them mixing it up almost twice so far. Yeah, they're not really known for being brawly. Shy with nowhere to go. Stuck between a molly and a hard place, and now Taco's in, in uh, equally his bad position. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how Taco can find value on this race. Because he's been playing so much Jet. And like Josh said at the at the top, actually all the desk was mentioning how there were, he wasn't even in consideration for the top five Jet players in America's when he's playing so much of it. So swapping onto this raise, see how comfortable he is, see whether he can actually find some value based off of the rest of the util, because there's not really any combinations here for the raise and the composition, but obviously it's just such a powerful tool no matter what. Boombot, nade, all of that. And he's gone immediately. Dead instantly. You're just talking about all the tools that he had. And they just not around what? long enough. Neither are cloud nine. How have they just managed that? They had two players committing in an all-in situation because Mazzino couldn't TP out. And they lost the first fight. Rooney's gonna have to win this one too, but he's caught reloading. I mean, you don't expect King to have just right. crept all the way back in the tree when the rest of his teammates just played, again, an all-in situation down in Rumble. That one is surprising for Cloud9 to lose, given the first pick. And also, I think the Utah went really nicely for them, but it was Nosworth. Yeah, that's just really, really nicely handled. He almost got the third there. <laughs> and Mazzino was able to trade that one, so. Right. Interesting to see Cloud9 kind of force through that after they get the kill. It's, Cloud9 is a team, yeah, they push their advantages, but who can also show the ability to stop. Oh, fast again into C, and there's three players here. Two now. Taco once again, first death. I believe is up to six or seven kills already, if I'm not mistaken. And the round is far from done. Still two targets that he could take, but it seems like they're already starting to scatter and save. Yeah, I mean, no, the two targets that are still alive. Those three kills happen so fast are the players who are planning to aggro yep. out of Libya done. And you have the two anchors on the other side of the map. You have the Killjoy, you have the Viper, those who rely on setups of their own making. They're not going to be able to walk into a retake. No, not in a situation like that. And, and so Zulz is hunting, everybody hunting from Cloud9 right now. They're looking to strike back instantly after losing that bonus. I thought it was first, at first, just going to be Zelsus, but you're right. Everyone's looking for, for a second helping, a, an extra course of the meal that they just made out of Leviathan in the opening moments of that round. We'll see if they're able to keep those weapons. You know, I want to go back to the, the taco conversation because I think it's interesting, too, to see him on that raise where if you go back to the beginning of the season, when Keznit was on Leviathan, there were conversations around Keznit versus Taco. Who's going to play the star role? And is it going to be uh, uh, using both? Because Taco historically struggled on raise. So for him to be here with the stakes so high on this role is just it's full circle. Yeah, really interesting. I think the conversation at the, I mean, the meta has shifted in such a way that it is fine to lock jet. It's mm -hmm. fine to play mm -hmm. in that situation. So 
funny to see them shift when again i don't see too much of the combinations coming in through here i was expecting an eco out of leviathan here but they seem to be adopting the light armor strat which is very nice adaptation towards the end of the season bulldog for nazar that's really it so with the two guns saved they're able to actually buy up here and in a way that they honestly can get three hero rifles next round if they want to even if they lose but all the util popped by Shy immediately here. And now he's left alone. All he's got is his gun. Wow. And Leaf's not gonna be laughing at that. He got two easy kills last time, and I think he was starting to think that they were not going to be prepared against the Neon and the speed that he can break timings with. Right there, obviously he didn't use that to his advantage, but still goes down. Looks like he did spot Zelsus for just a moment. The Seekers are gonna be used from pretty far back. And I imagine Leviathan are going to want to use that to funnel out onto the side, off the back of the paranoia, off the back of the cabbages, follow and fill in on the space that's been left. Taco still up in heaven. Wow. Never made his way out. King is finding more value. But it's just Rooney and King One now. Enemy remaining. Both controllers. 1v1. Rooney, first shots go a bit wide. He's going to get a second shot at this. Unless King just sticks it the whole way. He's gotten it to half. No He's way. gotten it three quarters of the way. Pulls off and Rooney gets the 1v1. Bold. But you can't do that to Rooney, the guy who has clutched by just sticking the defuse so many times. Yeah, he knows those timings. <laughs> I've heard the Cloud9 players talk about how often they were just getting away with sticking because so many players were disrespecting it. So happy to see there, Rooney. Actually living up to the word. Taco's struggling so far, and, and in ways that, I mean, it's certainly speaking to his confidence because he is trying to take some of these fights, and he's just not hitting so far. And he's been involved in a lot of these first engagements. You saw him actually get into position to use the nade to clear there on the retake. So that's the part of place where you have to see him alive because otherwise he's not getting value from the boom bot, from the nade. They swap both anchors onto this side. This might be more difficult for Leaf to get through. Do they have the utility that will pave the way? Ow. King's already the first to fall. He just TP'd up. There was no flash to actually push King out. And King's trying to battle and he still loses. Yeah, just complete disrespect. That's also the Jake that we've seen so many times this season that people have fallen in love with when you deliver. In instances like that, there's plenty to love. You've got Mazina who's starting to creep his way into the side and as soon as he gets forward, he drops. Unable to survive in the pit. I don't know that Levitan have a way into this. No stopper. That's the way in. Is he going to use it though? They have to play so far back, so he's expecting it and falls Let before even using it. Ult never goes off, and now just two around a Spectre, a Last Stinger. Player, stand. player standing. And they both find something. <laughs> Rooney's left died. in this 1v1 right. again. Another clutch oh, situation, oh. but Chai's not going to have time. Yeah, there's no time here. Took way too long again. Yeah. Bring it back to that very first round. And the retake for Livia done. How slow it was at coming back into that site on the beat. They gave up so much space. This time, they give up space in the form of the Viper's Pit, right? It's not necessarily like a, a whole site or anything like that. They're not losing map control, but they are losing the space that that pit controls. And I think they did a good job setting Taco up around the pit, where he double satcheled actually into that backside of the box, which is not covered. He clears some space that way in a novel way. But he's not able to collapse with his team. There's nobody ready for him to go. And Leviathan was so good. When it came to this map early on in the season, like when you think about the game against NRG, which they took, the game against Sentinels, they were so good at just retaking every single round. Oh, no. There's the ult. Yikes. And if that's not Leaf there reading the situation so, so, so well, I don't know what to say. Swarm grenade. They literally were postured <laughs> for a push. From the beginning of the round, he was already in that corner. Because of the util that got sent out, because of the omen smoke, all that sort of thing. And I like how Zeppa was saying, they don't anti, but... I think one thing they do is take huge advantage of little protocol mistakes. Gonna take advantage of the fact that they have the numbers lead and they're gonna go exploring B. You're gonna get all the way up into tree, courtesy of Jake Salt. I mean they're what? farming so many orbs too here. 
he fuses his ult, who has no armor, but... I mean, look at how well they're zoning off any attempted an approach from Leviathan. Sure, but Leviathan players are here this time. How much damage is he already getting? A lot. Oh, this bad. flank. Dude, they're two steps ahead of Leviathan. Every time. I mean... Such a good wide swing as well to actually isolate Shy and force Nazar have to wide swing to catch up. One enemy remaining. Levitana kept it interesting by getting into these like 1v1, 1v2 situations late in rounds, but you think about the first 90% of the round, it's all Cloud9. It's so fast too. It's incredibly fast here on Lotus. Most of the time we've actually seen them starting on this defensive side. But now on the attack, you see it just as dominant. This team is just so good with this composition. And I mean, bringing it back to the beginning of that round, obviously, that was a slow approach. Obviously, they were looking to counter that A main pressure. But every single play out of Taco just gets denied. Yeah. Taco already has three first deaths. He has as many kills as his team is rounds. He struggled. And Timeout's going to have to try to find a way to get him back in this. Again, we've seen slow starts out of Taco. Sometimes he just comes alive. But this is such a different role now. And that's why the focus is a little bit on how he can actually find impact. Because shifting that agent, obviously, has a big factor. Cloud9 is denying everything from him. The showstopper play is... It's a nice idea. You're going with the dog, but... He doesn't check his corner. That would have been a free kill on Leaf, by the way. When it comes to the Star Duelists, Cloud9, I mean, they have such a big focus on that. Which is hilarious because Cloud9 has, in their roles, so many situations where the Star Duelist isn't even playing Duelist. Like, Leaf doesn't play every single game as the Jet or the Neon. Sometimes Zeppa's coming in for that. So when you think about a team trying to do that to them, it's so much harder. This is brutal for a start here at Leviathan. They're still going to get a buy together. A bit scrappy, but Util's still there. And wow, I mean... Did he just slide out? No, he didn't even slide out. Just used a little bit of speed to get there before Mazino really expected it. And Mazino's shouldering. I need to see that on replay. As soon as the gate went down. So did his HP. That was wild. And they're already on the side. I mean, they're going to plant here with... 25 seconds into the round. That's absurd. This might feel like the paciest of what we've seen so far. They're just so quick on the trigger. They're so decisive and... To go back to the point you were making, it just feels like a, a, a staggering juxtaposition relative to how Leviathan have played things individually and as a Nobody unit. Yet. And you have to imagine coming out of the timeout there, owner's not going to be happy with that. None up. of the players are going to be happy with that. They had a plan to come back into this. They just talked about the adjustments and either those adjustments failed or the steps before go, go, go. getting even to those adjustments are still <laughs> problematic. I have to see that first kill from Leaf because it was just so fast, staggering the speed. Go, go, go. Yeah, no we'll way. see if we take a, we'll see if we get a chance to look at it once more. <laughs> Did he not reload that entire round? What's going on there? Oh, the stun is disgusting too. Go, go, go. It's just nasty. It's the double prong stun where it stuns up close. And then also deep on that shoulder peak angle. So Mazino doesn't really know what to do because that's landing late. He's peeking into it all of a sudden. It hits him. And it gives him that split extra second to actually find the head. These little things from Cloud9 are just insane. Again, when they see a gap in the protocol, when they see a gap or a mistake happening from one of the teams, they're able to abuse it so well. I just press into where it hurts. And that's another opener for Cloud9. Another instance in which Taco just has to watch the rest of the round. Leaf already with two. <laughs> He's up to six first kills in this game. Yeah, Leaf is just having his way with everything. Toxins going up. How, how demoralizing can it be? 
And it's just the beginning. Leviathan are in a, a weird situation where it feels, I mean, they need to get a win out of these next two teams. It feels like the deck is stacked against them. They have Loud and Cloud9. And they've got to get a win to keep this like in their hands to clinch playoffs. Otherwise, they're going to tie breaks. They have a chance to miss playoffs. They really do. And right now, they're getting dominated in this first map. The demeanor has shifted so much. You can see players on stage right now still trying to hype themselves up, but it's sheepish. Another save. At this yeah. point, Leviathan Classic. Go, go. Hey, he just like walked, he just disregarded, disrespected the wall. And he's doing it on all sides of the map. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's gotten a kill on C, he's gotten a kill first on A, walks into B. It's like every single round you have to like readjust. Oh my goodness, our A hold is not working against him. Oh my goodness, our B hold is not working against him. Let's put our kill toy util there. And you can see, look, it's all stacked up there now. Which here. finally might actually be the right call. Seekers pop instantly just to figure out, is this actually, can we push back this A hit? But they used the Trailblazer from Cloud9 to get all of that utility that you were just referring to. They've cleared out the turret and they weren't able to. Now they've cleared the Nano and the other Alarm Bot. I wonder if Zelsus threw his train. own Nano there. Very possible. They've left Mazino up close. Taco, not far off. There we go. Oh, but the TP might get punished. Wow, he's actually taking the risk to go all the way back into A because Taco was left alone there. While the Viper wall was up, but he could have gotten sprayed down. Cover going out. And we finally have a round where Leviathan in advantage. They've taken down Zelsus. Can they convert on it in a situation where Cloud9 really hasn't made a full commit to where they want to go? And that's going to open things up a lot, man. A free kill like that, a paranoia to swing out and challenge Heaven. Forcing Nosra to take a step back. 30 Forcing seconds left. Taco to join up with them. Spike plan. Is this another save? I mean, at the money's point, not great. No, I mean, at this point, you have to be trying to take risks to win this. Let's play. You have to. Yeah, you just, I mean, you're absolutely right. You can't play safely any longer. Staring at this deficit, Leviathan starting to work their way out into the site. Taco falls, but it's traded back, a 2v2. We haven't seen these in a couple of rounds. They've been so decisive from Cloud9. They're off of smoke yet. This is actually this tough. This is a spamble angle. Oh, he's just off of it. He's just off of it. Mazino down low. He gets three, and Leviathan are going to get another round. There's that patient retake with time and forcing your opponents to get stuck in their risks. Their Cloud9 goes deep into heaven. And because of that, this smoke from Mazino is, I mean, just beautiful. To recognize we've cleared everybody on site. And then as well, Nasra, the guy who died up in heaven, able to make that communication call. Very nicely done from Leviathan, just in time. And even, even still, you're thinking, Cloud9 is so good on defense. Time We're still thinking, test. honestly, go next. This is so tough. Leaf gonna go for it. Same stun from before. And you can see that almost caught Mazina. Go. They're so quick at rotating once there is that A main pressure from the defense. Once they recognize there's a flash out of Nosworth and Mazino, they're able to pivot so Scout fast. Destroyed. And they've just pulled rotates off with 30 seconds into the round. Pressured and gotten info on all three sites. And Taco right now in trouble. He's alone on this B side. He has the alarm bot to play against, but he's gonna face up against the full force of Cloud9 and Leaf has been dominating him. 4-0 so far in those first engagements. Four Leaf against Taco. It's been tough sledding for him for sure. This is their third pivot right here, Doug. Back to where they started and back where Mazino has been left the entire round. And he's instantly spotted. I wouldn't be surprised to see them pivot again, but yeah, with the showstopper, 35 seconds. The crazy part is if you see any other team do this, you're saying this round is over. They don't have time. They have time. I mean, they have ample time. That's not gonna feel good though. 
Those two nanos still hadn't been cleared. And Shy's able to hold them back. Lined up for him. It's just Jake now. He's got Spike, but he's being surrounded. He's going to get dropped. And I love how Leviathan played that round. Last round in the half. One of the great things they did, you saw it in the previous, where you actually had Zelsus walk up into B. They broke the turret. They broke the mollies. They broke the alarm bots. In this round, every single part portion of the map was actually faced before they could go up and walk up and break you till. So all these nanos are still here. The alarm bot's still on B. All that sort of thing was working for them. And then they still denied as well. That showstopper on A, key for Mizino to spot for. Those protocols worked and they put them together in a pinch because I don't think they're in their strap book at this point. Taco is so far up. He's dead. He's yeah. so dead. 5-0. So numbers once again for Cloud9. The opportunity to close things out in 9-3 half. Levithan have Shai's lockdown to work with. Oh, so close. Yeah, it dealt some damage. Now they know where Mizuno is. Try to deal with him accordingly. Meanwhile, meanwhile, if the timing is right on the swing from stairs, it could be good. Oh, he's not there it is. It. Do they know they're well, on it? Oh, I think he just got spotted. Yeah. The pit's going to go. Oh, oh, I thought that pit was going to go down instantly. <laughs> Talk about timing what on is the swing. Pit? Look at the pit though, what is that? He placed it on the rope and it's going in to spawn. Yeah, that's a wonky one. Oh. Cloud9 just seems so drilled and so disciplined right now. The timing off of the swings that they're taking around each other is gorgeous. Switching sides. They just have a bead on things. This is such a dominating half. You're right, they've got a read on it. Their players are playing well. Not ready yet. Everything flowing for them. Still, still a couple smiles from Cloud9, or from Nevithan, excuse me. Earlier we spoke with King, speaking of which, to get his take on the opposition today, the number one NA squad, Cloud9. Take a listen. Yo sabía que tenían un core fuerte, que son Sepa, Leaf, eh, y Celsius, son jugadores muy buenos. Y cuando añadieron a, a sus dos nuevos jugadores, que son Jake y, y Rooney, eh, creo que todos, eh, literal, todos quedaron sorprendidos con, con la sinergia que lograron como equipo. Y, y nada, ahora son uno de los equipos más fuertes de, de la liga. Y, y nada, eh, motivado para enfrentarlo. Les tengo mucho respeto a, todo, a todos los players. Y eso, que va, vamos a darlo todo, que sea un buen partido. Y, Y nada, necesitamos esa victoria, así que vamos con todo. It's interesting to listen to King talk as you see him on screen again, the leader for Leviathan and his his expectations of Cloud9 and how they have surprised everyone, including Leviathan, including all the players on how well they've performed throughout the year. And now they find themselves on the receiving end of this this cocktail of Cloud9 just dominance. Yeah. I mean, you hear the respect constantly given from Leviathan to some of these other teams. It was the respect they garnered themselves, but I mean, just to get back to what he was saying, yeah, nobody expected the synergy. The level of play from Cloud9 is so crazy given the situation that they had at the beginning of the season. That's so far behind us now that we can, we, we see the scoreline and we say, yeah, this is normal. <laughs> it's normal. 9-3. And something I was trying to get at at the beginning of this too, in that first half is, that was the attack side from Cloud9. Normally they're starting on defense and we get things like, we get the stats on defense. They're the best defensive team on this map. They're so good at their retakes, best retake percentage in the league. Best on the gun rounds, everything. Best, 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 because this is an attack sided map but they always come out with dominating halves. Last week, we had that ridiculous one from them when they went up against MIBR. There's just little chance here. Let's see what Leviathan can do. Because like you're saying, still smiles on that side. They've got a long way to go. Not only on this map, but in this series. Nazareth Trailblazer are going to be the first on site with Taco Satchel in close behind. 
So they've gotten out onto B, haven't committed to the spike plant yet, but you see the Nano's already set up to defend against the Diffuse. That dog got way farther than it should have. And there's no map control here from Libya Thun. They're gonna have to go for late A flanks. Which, Libby, or Cloud9 are actually clearing out already the site. No, no. They've already taken care of the nanos that were there. Actually, you see it popped, but if they're not pacey Boys on this, Cloud9 are going to flood out before Libby Thun know what's hit them. They have to fight through a Viper wall right now. They have to rely on Taco's nade as the last line of defense, and he's down. This is what so much time for that flank that you mentioned just a few seconds ago. King's That's timing is great. Shine's close by. And Zeppo with 10 HP and way too many targets. There for oh. the first time. I think Cloud9 made the wrong read on exactly how Leviathan were playing. I think they were shocked that there was nobody on the site. I think they were shocked that there was nobody already in B-Link. Or trying to flank A by the time they took the site. That they thought for sure there's something else going on here and they wanted to fight the post plant head on. But honestly, if they had just waited it out, waited, put their Viper wall up, they would have gotten that round. Instead, they challenge and they lose a lot in the process. And they lose the pistol. Niviathan with a full not V-buy here. Two rifles, two ghosts, one Spectre. They're looking to balloon this pistol round win into coming back into this game. They've done a lot of work on the economy management. To be able to fight in situations like this, you can tell the, the approach is different. There's that one Vandal dealing some damage. Early exploratory mission by Zelsis gets turned away. It just seems like they're holding. You see where King is playing, making sure there's no one pushing rubble. You have Shy who's waiting, making Blinded. sure there's no one pushing mid. And they just dropped an alarm bot too. So you imagine he's going to want to move off of that position here very shortly. Josh did a telestrator breaking down the timings of Leviathan. On this one, it's not so much, on this composition, it's not so much about the recyclable cooldowns of the Sovadar or the Breach Bomb fault line like you was talking about on Haven, but it's more about the fuel and the cycles for them to have all that up. Hey, Rooney, how? how on earth did Rooney get that kill? As long as Leviathan are able to recover the two rifles, everything is okay when it comes to this sort of round and approach from them. But they must stay alive with two to keep those up. Last player standing. Rifle finding value, as you were just saying. So they have one. Tarts they have a destroyed. position to pick up the other. Nosser's actually going all the way waterfall right down now. Here. The gun is down inside of B-Link. And that's where he's coming back right now to pick it right back up. Oh, my goodness. So it's not clean, but it's not the worst situation in the world. One player might not be able to buy up. Because again, only two players with pistols. I mean, that is nasty from Rooney. How we got to see that? Trailblazer took him down, but I mean, you take two already? And we actually haven't even seen in this Cloud9 getting a thrifty round win because we haven't needed it on that first half. It was so dominant. So Livia done withstanding, but you see some factors there. MC actually calling a timeout late here. <laughs> Surprising little thing. But okay, we'll take it. And I, I think I'd be happy with that eco round, actually. <laughs> As if I'm not, they had two, they had a, a Phantom and a Vandal and a Bulldog, too? A uh, Spectre. That, oh, yeah. Spectre. No, yeah, none of that got picked up. So as you were, as you mentioned, it was just those two rifles carried over, which was the main goal, but you're right. I, I'd be happy with how that round turned out, too, all things considered. I think here Cloud9 looking to shift up the defensive side and also maybe MC instilling a sense of let's just close this out as fast as possible rather than falling into a trap. A lot of times when you're in such a lead, it's like, okay, we got time here. We got plenty of time. But the best idea is to say, let's close this out as fast as possible. Do as much as you can. Because then that mental doesn't start to get into other patterns where things start to slow. Again, four rifles here. I said one player wasn't going to be able to buy. That's Nosler. He's got a stinger. But they all got light armor. So the staying power for Libya done is very nice here. 
And actually, no player on Cloud9 is picking up a Phantom, so that is quite interesting. Especially because the prep coming into this game, Libya Thun was not a light armor team for the most part. If I remember correctly, they were situationally going for light armor in situations where they needed some buffer economically. Poison's off. But for the most part, it wasn't occurring a bank with it. It wasn't going for it, especially not on rounds like this, the bonus. But they've got a lot here. They're not only still bonusing, but they've got firepower for days. Honestly, to match Cloud9, other than that stinger, and there we go, Taco. Is that his first? That is his first, yep. first duel Blinded. win against Leaf. And it's a nice one too. Perhaps an indicator of things to come. You still find yourself down four rounds, but having the numbers advantage here certainly helps things. Careful here, 30 seconds left. They're in order to clear out tree and they're gonna funnel in behind it. The Trailblazer clearing out backside as well. So they've done a really good job. At least it looked like of using utility to clear the site, but you just haven't covered your flank. And I think Shy needs to take that fight through that Viper wall there on Jake falling back. Mazino's all the way in There's backside 13 A right now. Oh my goodness, you're right. Left. They're gonna funnel in right behind him. And Mazino was entirely undetected. And actually with that context, I actually love what Shy did because now he has the opportunity to flank them. It's gonna be slow though. Such good movement from King there. The round's gonna be over before Shy even gets a chance to have an impact on it. screen down. Rooney's in a 1v3. He's got a Vandal and a Molly. And they've fallen back into such good positions too. Shy doesn't even need to go and show that he's willing to flank like that. Instead falls back to just drop the Molly on the spike. Rooney has way too many things he has to check. She's just a wide swing into that to try to take the fight, but King gets a third on the round. It's tough there, actually, if you're Taco trying to stick close to King because King is playing such wide off angles consistently. But it's a great round from him. Look Not at this recharged. movement from him. You heard Not the little piece the, the, before this game started about how difficult it is for him to be hit. He's not sticking close to that box, mostly because that box is spammable, but also because it gives him a better off angle and he's jiggling. Just pressing the strafe keys back and forth while he's even shooting. Let's start I believe party. the words that Seller used were Michael Jackson moonwalking his way. <laughs> and I get it, I see the resemblance. I wouldn't want to try to shoot that guy either. Here's a classic Cloud9 eco round. I said they didn't have many to go for in that first half. And here's the first kill from Rooney. Out times King. And he picks up a Vandal because of that too. Just for free. He just abused. That's the sort of thing right there. That's King's Viper Wall. Rooney just runs into it and uses it to actually destroy him and pick up a gun where he's not even able to be isolated from the rest of the team. Shy just confirmed that he did get that weapon. Shadows traveling. And now, Leviathan are in trouble because this is Cloud9, we say it every single week, is winning more than a third of their eco rounds. There. This has the makings of another, especially when you consider that Leviathan want to go towards B and that's where all of Zelsus's utility resides. Awesome. Able to clear out some of it. Yeah. Molly's through through. Taco satcheled his way across. Elsa's playing on the outside of the smoke, waiting for help. There's the help. The help falls. Three through waterfall, and they actually get denied because the good util from Leviathan there. And they're not relying on post plant here. They're playing up close, which gives them the opportunity to give up guns. That's so big. Rooney finding the person intended to control the flank. You've got Jay close by with him. They're going to funnel out onto the site. They are standing. There's no way. Not where deals with that. <laughs> Oh, that's a Cloud9 classic. We've got to see at least two of those in map, especially when close, but oh, yeah, yeah. One enemy remaining. Their eco round win rate is legendary at this point. Legendary. I haven't seen anything quite like it. And it's such a unique way to go for it, too. They just have such two strong Sheriff players, and then the rest of them just support them with stingers. Ridiculous. For reference, again, that over a third round win rate with Eco is so crazy because the the round win rate between two even teams, you'd expect to be 50%, right? 30% when you don't even have weapons. 
Yeah, that's just silly. <laughs> and I'm starting now to have to come up with different ways to explain that because we've done it over and over every single series. 30%, double the average, yada, yada, yada. And Leviathan's a team who's familiar with that too. They're so good at eco rounds. And maybe that's why it's been so long for them coming to actually go for this light armor strat. But that's gonna give them a chance here that I didn't think was actually possible given that first half. MC calling the second time out of the map for them. Still up four. And again, it was off of that thrifty round win. MC saw something he didn't like, so they choose to call a timeout. And much like the conversation was, in the previous time out, how do you close this thing out here? How do you get out of this? The thrifty <laughs> round may have been the spark that they needed to get them past the finish line. Yeah, but another classic fashion too, MC calling it right after they win too. <laughs> here. And that's an element of, let's let them think about what just happened <laughs> because it shouldn't have. Let's let them think about the fact that we just got eco going on. It's interesting here, they faint aggression. Belief was so far back. Right at the beginning, and Jake is stuck. Second first kill for Taco. Important for this guy to continue to have that confidence. And it's something that's hilarious to mention because uh, obviously he's mentioned, he's tweeted about how he's not comfortable on stage and whatnot, but over and over, he just continues and continues and continues to take his shot. Whether he's playing Jet, whether he's playing Race, he's the guy who's always doing what his team needs, which is double satching, which is diving dashing forward into his smokes, whatever it might be, he's always doing it, no matter the situation. And that's commendable. But it needs to end in results too. And this round, great from Taco. Rooney's still playing towards C. He's got the pit too, so you imagine if there's just a little bit of contact, you can choose to drop it, play. I'm scared here. Around it, stay alive. The timing on this fuel, he has to wait for so long because it was just Don't using both wall and orb. Seekers, Molly. They can't get through that. I mean, this is kind of okay because it's giving them the chance to get the fuel. And they're going to pivot, actually. Mazino with a... Was that Molly just being popped preemptively? Look at how far Taco is. He's going to clear out all of the Seekers. Mazelsis is going to close line from the side. Can they get the plan? I don't think so. No flash, though. Shine off. We're going to try to do it on their own. Time is short. Health was short. Resources were low. What just happened on that Molly? I thought that was such a nice position for Mizuno to TP. And also, kind of ingenious, too, because the breakable door wasn't broken yet. And also, Mizuno has been going for constantly very obvious TPs in the past. Josh pointed one out on Haven, but here on this map, he's constantly going back C. So... To see it not paired with that execute and then to come in after the execute makes me wonder. It just got killed because of a molly placed inside of that link. I'm shocked that that worked out for Cloud9 there. Well, it felt like pure happenstance, but no. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen it again, but not going to be the case. <laughs> there we go. That's the third. Get him in there. There. Poison's off. Last round. They actually lost after one of those early entries from Taco. Ooh, King's in trouble. He almost gets two there. Cloud9 are doing a really good job actually nullifying King. You remember back to that eco, just walking way in front of his wall. But they do lose one. And this situation becomes difficult for the defense. And already Rooney's being proactive about it. Zeppa Leaf being proactive about it, running all the way back to stack C. And Rooney with a great off angle down in B main, but Leviathan looked to be making the right choice here. Grouping up his fort. And they have so much info util as well to feel out the stack. It just has to start happening a little sooner. Not necessarily in this round, but in rounds in the future because they're running out of time often. Re-exploration for Cloud9. Might cue them into they made the wrong choice a little earlier than we might have expected. 30 seconds left. This episode's full utility for the retake attempt, so we'll see how things pan out. Now, All coming in the back here. Turret's gonna spot them. Nasra does get the spike down, and the lockdown's invested instantly. Leviathan pushing their way forward because they want to take the fight into rubble, into mound. It's a one for one. How's Messino left in this? TP out. Rooney dancing in and out of it. Now having to go forward. Oh my goodness. Tucking in his smoke just on the lip of it. It was 40 HP, not able to land the shots. 
Rooney with another massive play for Cloud9. And that one is, unfortunately, the dagger. Because it's six rounds for Livietan to come back into now, and... Oh, ay ay ay. I like the... Mazzino couldn't take the risk to run through that smoke or walk through that smoke because of what Rooney did, right? Right, Just exactly. randomly spray. He was so low HP. So he played on the edge of it and wants to use the timing to fight him. And as soon as those shots fire out, Mizuno thinks he might be dead. So he has to swing. But if he's just a little bit more patient, Rooney might think that he went into the A site. And he's actually running out of time in that situation. I think the biggest mistake, though, though, not recognizing in time that their flank was coming and it was going to be coming by so many people. Because they put the lockdown in plain view of everyone. And because of that, they have to overcommit to fight. Five nine have sent three down a main already, and the Trailblazers hot to trot. They're following behind it. That's going to put a lot of pace into Leviathan's hit. First Rooney's kill again. Down. Fast flank again. How do they deal with it? Is there going to be a flash to fight mound? There's still two there. Leaf trying to push forward. That flash blind. Oh, the flash the wall. Oh, they're all blind. Player standing. Pure chaos. And there's still life here. Despite match point for Cloud9. <laughs> there's still life. Everything, honestly, in these early rounds is working really well Ball for the Don Taco's gotten three first coming kills in back. a row. They're finding the right side of the map, honestly. In that last round, they went to the A side after having a 4v3. Which, again, constantly favors the attackers. But just multiple instances now where it just slips away. And finally, one converts. Zelsa stays alive, will carry the lockdown into the next round. Leviathan still with a lot of work to do. You take it around at a time, you may see an opportunity for this. This fight was so scrappy. One enemy remaining. Honestly, if that wall from Leaf, that fast lane actually connects. If he throws that a little higher in the instance, obviously he was blinded up, so it's tough. His, the rest of Leviathan's not able to swing on B main there, or C main, excuse me. They're not able to swing and help out of mound without Don't wide swinging it. into the unknown. And they're forced an eco here from Cloud9. Obviously one weapon saved in that last. And also it looks like a hero rifle bought up too. They have five bolts. They just got Zeppas online. So they have an abundance of tools to try to close this one out. They may, what they may lack in guns, they have an, an extra firepower. Look at this round too. Zeppa just flashed into A main. Didn't see anything, and Leaf ran all the way back over to C. Interesting smoke from Jake, too. As soon as that revolving door gets tapped, he's worried about the pivot. And this might be, finally, Leviathan actually using Cloud9 strengths against them. They're just all starting to rotate back so quickly. What? What is this? They, they've got... They've got something spe I mean, magic. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, it works. That's now three rifles that they have to. Jake just picked one up off the kill with the sheriff. The pit goes down C. All attention towards A. And Leaf is here. He's close on sight. He has that ult. I wonder if that's a cue for them to go. Leaf just jumps out with a stinger. There's going to be maybe two detained here. No, zero. They're going to push into the pit. Right on the edge. Try to fight it. And it works out. Taco and King getting two big kills, though. Number still in favor of Cloud9, but now King alone. Spike didn't even get planted. And with 13 seconds left, he's got to make a decision. He's got to do so quickly. 10 seconds left. It's just out of reach. Zelsus waiting on the other side of the wall. And soon as it goes down, he's caught jumping. He grab it. Four seconds. Oh. He's got time. He's in the open. Rooney. Oh, he pulled it off. Oh. Defenders win. A brutal spot to be in. A tough decision to make. And one that goes the way of cloud nine. Oh my goodness. So many little tight situations, split second decisions. Out of Mazzino, out of King. And we could have been looking, still at playing this game. We could have been looking at a situation where cloud nine never got to match point. We could have been looking at a crazy comeback from Leviathan instead. We get to look back on this game and continue to think about Cloud9's insane dominance on this map with this Neon Comp. Undefeated. And they look to go much more than that. These guys are crazy.
Leaf played exceptionally well. Rooney had so many key moments. He, he and Leaf combined dropped for, I believe, 45 kills between just the two of them. They played so well. At one point, Rooney was 20 and nine. Found plenty of value with the Sheriff's Jake did too. It was an excellent display from Cloud9. We'll see if they can replicate it on Haven. We'll be right back. Currently unstoppable. True. He is just a consistent demon. El Diablo. Hey guys, it's Ye. Welcome to my course on Optimal Valorant Training. I'm going to be demonstrating now some angle clearing. I'll slowly come around the corner as well, making sure no one's on these off angles. Red Bull gives you wings. Red Bull gives you wings. 